Uh, on behalf of myself and uh, my co-chair Donna C, I welcome you all to this uh, session entitled Changing the Academic Innovation Landscape. And the first speaker is Milton L. Brown, uh, Innova Shar Cancer Institute, a new model for catalyzing medical innovations through drug discovery. Milton. Good morning. It's an honor to be here. Uh, I'm the director for the Center for Drug Discovery at Inova Shar Cancer Center, and uh, deputy director for the uh, Cancer Center uh, itself. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about uh, a new model for uh, filling really the funding gap between basic science discovery and getting therapeutics into the clinic, which is a really important issue in, in academic and nonprofit type of work. Uh, what I show you here uh, is a, a picture of our hospital. We have a world-class hospital located about 15 minutes outside of Washington, D.C., uh, really dedicated to the community. Uh, in uh, 2014, uh, uh, we bought the, uh, the Exxon Mobil uh, headquarters, which is what you see in the second uh, arrow, which is a 117-acre, and, uh, 1.3 million, million square foot facility that we purchased uh, to really develop an institute for personalized health. And with uh, donations from uh, various donors, in particular Dwight uh, and, and Martha Shar, we developed a cancer institute which uh, funded uh, the center which I'm directing. The center is focused really towards developing new cures uh, for various types of cancers, breast cancers, prostate, uh, various brain cancers. We have uh, radiation products which mitigate the prob problems associated with uh, radiation toxicities. We have drugs that uh, lower blood pressure while protecting the kidney. And we have new medications that we're developing for, uh, for alcohol and drug addiction. People themselves have problems. In our communities, uh, we find that these problems with disease are pretty much not solved. And whether it's cardiovascular or cancer uh, or, or brain or central nervous diseases, uh, the community themselves, even our families, have these issues. And one of the ways that we've attacked this as a solution is to develop the infrastructure uh, on our campus to do therapeutics development. Uh, two of the major problems, though, are addressing the issue of funding. How do you fund this? And also, how, how, do you, how much infrastructure do you actually uh, build? Now, I want you to understand the difference here. This, this, is, a found, this is a nonprofit that uh, has decided to take a new model and develop their own infrastructure instead of utilizing others and other infrastructures to develop their own infrastructure. One of the key issues in the infrastructure and funding gap really is that it imposes a, a problem in generating, uh, getting uh, basic science studies and, and discoveries to the clinic. I mean, there's a, there's a complete gap. And what happens because of that gap is that faculty members in, in academia have to try to use startups to push their d discoveries forward. Sometimes patents are done very early. Uh, and, and, and then there's a fight to get licensing uh, to, to industry or, or, or biotech in a very early undeveloped stage. So it creates um, a serious problem for inventors and the issues of this model in regards to the barriers uh, there are, you know, there's no infrastructure usually in academic institutions to actually bring therapeutics forward. You don't have a group that does IND enabling studies. 
typically don't have groups to do full ADME PK and GLP uh, and GMP synthesis of GMP material. So there's an issue. And uh, also, we found that the funding gap is a really pr big problem. And that, that goes not just to each project, but it also goes to the sustainability of multiple projects being able to be pushed forward into the clinic. Typically in the academic arena, a, a really uh, good investigator or a couple of investigators will individually get a product forward. But we're talking about here developing a program which allows a smooth transition of these technologies. So we built the infrastructure, we're building the infrastructure. It started with John Nita Huber, who came from the, as director of the NCI, and he built the Institute for Genomics. And what you see in the dark blue um, represents the Center for Drug Discovery and Development, which, uh, which I came um, in, in December of 2016. All of these studies, uh, all of these uh, infrastructure changes uh, are being placed in that building, those four buildings which we, we show you. And uh, we are currently addressing the issue of what, what types of things besides the standard uh, uh, infrastructure do we need, but most of all, how do we address this funding gap? One of the ways that we've moved forward is to rely on philanthropy, and philanthropists offer a tremendous opportunity to, to grasp hold of uh, a focused type of project, um, and if we can present them with a common disease, it, it makes for a great partnership. One of the classic new examples of uh, focused philanthropy, which was successful, was Cystic Fibrosis Foundation in 1999, chose instead of putting money into academic grants, they decided to put $150 million uh, over 15 years directed towards drug discovery with Aurora Biosciences, now Vertex. 2012, the approval of the first drug for cystic fibrosis. Uh, so the result of this was a $3.3 billion payment to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Now, for me, the important point here, this was a big win for cystic fibrosis patients. This is the first drug that, that, that uh, was, was made for, for them to help with secretions. But, but not only that, it was a small market, only about two to 3,000 patients per year, which really was addressed by this nonprofit in their, their focused philanthropy. Well, I did a little research on the focused philanthropy. And when you look at focused philanthropy in regards to my sector, health, there's about $99 billion of focused philanthropy per year. Compare that to the NIH uh, for uh, peer review process, peer review grants, which is about 18 uh, billion, um, representing 36,000 grants. It's obvious to me that the focused philanthropy provides a large pool that we have not really tapped into. The model that's being used currently in nonprofits, which I work in, has been really to give grant money to academic centers, ask them to work on a, pro a particular project or work on a, a, a particular disease, but have no real interactions with the, the, the institutions. This is problematic when you expect academic centers to actually find something and then have to develop it and develop opportunities with industry. This model really, really suffers. So we've, we've focused on developing a new model, and this is a model that's disease-focused that allows industry partners and academic centers which have the same uh, thinking towards that particular disease to engage our center and our hospital in a very focused manner towards uh, new discoveries. And we have powered this by what we call disease-focused philanthropy. Um, we're very excited because we believe it's going to fuel new medicine innovations 
it's going to catalyze the formation of new companies in our area and spur really economic and growth development uh, where we are. One of the uh, one of the, the the current funding models that we that was used for even the money that I received to start this center uh, was just from donor philanthropy, really important and in, 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 uh, educated donors who have a passion about a certain type of disease, put money into uh, the care of, of our nonprofit. But we've developed a new model. And this is one I think is uh, very innovative because I, I haven't uh, found this model in other places, is that we're looking at local businesses and we're doing, like analogous to crowdfunding, we're doing business crowdfunding where we're taking smaller companies and larger companies where they have money that they're, they're using for philanthropy, whether it's for walks or whether it's for various types of community outreach, but we're now taking, asking the CEOs of these companies to pool this money together uh, in an in a analogous business crowdsourcing, which we think uh, will, will provide uh, quickly the, the types of monies that we need to generate to push projects forward. So what is the funding gap? We discovered new targets, proteins, molecular targets through genomics. We apply chemistry to find molecules that inhibit those targets. The funding gap really exists uh, when you talk about absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion models, IND enabling studies that require tox, GLP tox, et cetera. These, these types of, of studies aren't really funded that well. And in fact, when you look underneath at the different places that fund. Early discovery is funded by NIH and SBIR money or R01 or, or U mechanisms. Whereas ADME and IND enabling studies are really funded by pr programs that take two to three years to make a decision or two years literally for you to get your money to do the project and several of these programs have, uh, are not existent anymore. We believe in our structure that we can take a, a product from discovery all the way to phase two in the clinic. The discovery process uh, here in blue uh, and the drug development process in green are very different. And, and what we believe in, in, in our model uh, is that our nonprofit will take from protein discovery through compound synthesis to testing through cellular models, through animal models, through ADME, uh, ADME tox, to partner with CROs for formulation and GMP synthesis and IND enabling studies to complete an IND application. I've successfully done this process uh, two times, taking two medicines into the clinic now, which, have, which are in phase, phase two for uh, uh, various, various diseases. So what are, we, what are we saying here? We're saying we, a nonprofit will build infrastructure to develop new therapies for the improvement of patients. It's guided by a disease focus, whether it's patient patients or patient philanthropists or philanthropists. We're also powering our institution in regards to focus based on our, our, our institutes that are funded uh, at our centers. We will use CROs and academic institutions that are our partners to drive a compound through IND for developing a new drug candidate, for, for then testing those compounds in human phase one and phase two studies. We believe that, that as far as we can go with this model, and we have to then partner with, with uh, larger companies or biotechs afterwards. So I want to finish this by saying uh, if philanthropy represents an opportunity for a tremendous resource for funding this gap. And the focus type of philanthropy is important because it allows for the potential pooling 
of money, whether it's the local businesses pooling money together, where you look at larger companies from, the, from around the country with a similar focus pooling their money towards disease-specific projects, or whether you look at foundations developing a, a disease focus together and using their philanthropy to help drive innovations into the clinic. Uh, we look forward to our development, and I thank you very much for your time.